Hello guys, welcome to the Solution Architect Show, episode number six. Um, your host is Ben. Today, I'd like to cover the eight common mistakes for a new solution architect and how to avoid them. Okay, let's get started. Mistake number one, um, not talking to the real customer. So as a, a new um, solution architect, especially when you get it hand over uh, a project from your peer solution architect, um, normally the handover is um, performed by a business analyst and your peer architect, maybe a project manager, and they will tell you um, this is what the customer want and this is the requirement and please give us a design uh, and go through the necessary processes um, to to get approved and they can carry on to do the builds and, and, and deploy. Um, what is very common um, in this scenario is if you do um, what the PM and business analysts tell you, um, often than not, your, your design will not actually meet what the, your real customer wants. Uh, a better way is um, listen to whatever the handover will, will tell you, but you still need to meet the real customer. Sit down with them or ask them out for coffee. Just get an overview. Um, ask them some simple question like um, um, exactly why you're doing this project, uh, what do you try to achieve, what are the business drivers. Um, this will really help you to sort of understand uh, what your customer really wants, understand the problem. So the key thing for Solving a problem is understand the problem. So talk to your real customers, cutting off the middleman. Um, so this num this is the mistake number one. So mistake number two is um, this pressure from some stakeholder to use a particular solution. Um, what this is so often. Um, for a project, you're dealing with a different stakeholder. You have your project manager, uh, you have your business sponsor, business, um, so they, get, they, they tell you what the problem they're trying to solve, right? So they, you also have security manager, your operational manager. They all approaching this project from a very different perspective. Um, as a solution architect, your role is balance their concerns, is uh, whenever you uh, you make a a design decision, that uh, they will uh, having they will need some sort of compromises, right? So you need to really engage with them, talk to them, uh, and make up your own decision. So a a very common mistake made by a new architect is you often have a very um, a very uh, sort of uh, well spoken stake uh, stakeholder. That, that influence you to use a particular solution, they're going to benefit from him. Um, that if you actually go down this approach, then your solution probably will, um, will, will only benefit um, one or two stakeholders, but not a broader, um, not a well-designed solution. They're actually going to deliver the, uh, the business value as well as um, to deliver the same sort of align with the same uh, thinking um, that other stakeholders want. Um, so the way to avoid this is um, always try to um, strike a balance and always try to uh, risk, risk or understand, explain um, the implication um, behind any design decisions in your, um, in your design document. So that's mistake number two. Um, mistake number three is, as a solution architect, your knowledge is limited. So in the previous uh, episode, I covered, um, as a solution architect, you need to have a, a broader understanding of the technology stack. Um, a, a common mistake is, um, if you're coming from a developer background, especially a certain type of technology uh, like a .NET or Java or maybe product like a SharePoint, Dynamic CRM or Salesforce, then your 
understanding of the technology is very limited in 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 that that what you did in the past, then the outcome is your solution uh, will be um, designed um, using those technology using those technology that you're familiar with. This is often not going to be the best solution. Um, as a solution architect, you need to broaden your technology. Um, so when you go to conferences, you're not only going to the, um, the, the product or the technology company that you're familiar with, you need to talk to other companies. You need to listen to other um, podcasts or conferences or understand other product and technology so that when uh, you have a, a problem, then you can, come, uh, you can come up as many options as you can. Um, and then you can recommend the, the best solution to solving that problem. Um, so there's a third problem. Um, so the fourth problem um, is you're forcing a technology pattern or, um, or design to a business stakeholder. So example is, um, say you've got a system A and a system B that you need to integrate them together. Um, you, as a, a company standard, um, you might having a, a standard to say, hey, application to application integration that need to go through a middleware that your company um, has. Uh, example like a JBoss or uh, MuleSoft or uh, Microsoft um, Azure Logical App, for example. Um, so um, when you actually um, talking to your stakeholder, you can't just say, hey, as a company policy, uh, you need to do this. Because um, often involving middleware, the, the cost is, is much higher than, um, than doing a sort of application to application um, integration. Um, so you really need to talk in terms of what are the risks, what are the benefits that you actually um, using the tech technology um, uh, sort of standard that, that your company have. For example, in one of the projects I have that um, the, the company using a um, integration that need to increase, integrate with a, a line of business application with our payment, um, sorry, with our accounting system. Um, the, the accounting system, um, so there's a lot of um, sort of a file CSV based integration that was happening in the file, in the accounting system. Um, the business just say, hey, why we have to pay this to actually using the middleware? Why can't we just stick to the old CSV file? Um, so the way I persuade them is to say, hey, um, um, you are dealing with the payroll system that is... The way I engage with the business is to say, hey, this is... If you're using the CSV file, the, the end result is you're going to integrate the sort of the... the, the um, so the payment information um, in the accounting system, they're potentially going to impact your revenue. And also there are actually customer private information that are held in the CSV. They also, if you store it in the file share, they're potentially having some sort of a, um, a security private information uh, risk. So I laid out this sort of two risks to them. One is revenue, the other is private information uh, sort of breach. Um, if you go down the CSV file uh, uh, solution, are you able to um, sign off those risks? Or do you want to take those risks going forward? This way, um, the business can understand, okay, we're paying a bit more money, but we actually, we actually mitigate some of the risks and to make a, uh, sort of a system much more, more robust uh, and also having the confidence uh, to use such technology. Um, number, mistake number five, um, thinking solution architect is a decision maker. So in the previous uh, episode, I covered that um, a, a solution architect, it isn't a decision maker. In fact, a solution architect is all more like a advisor. They uh, lay out all the facts, 
uh, around all the options to solving a problem and put a recommendation based on um, the facts they, they have and also the risk, what are the uh, company strategy and all of those constraints we have. And, uh, and essentially advise the decision maker, this is the best way to go. Um, so, um, so yes, remember you're not a decision maker, um, you are advisor, so find out all the facts, risk, constraint, issues, lay out in your design document and present it to the decision maker, let them to make an informed decision. Um, mistake number six, um, not know what each stakeholder's concern. So this is very common. So um, I believe, um, so for example, that your, when you talk about to uh, uh, sort of your, your business stakeholder, all they want to know is whether the solution actually meeting what, what they want. Um, um, so you're not really going to talk about uh, a lot of those uh, non-functional um, non requirement, or we call a, a sort of, a, a, they call a quality attribute. Uh, those high availability and all those. You might ask them a question like, uh, uh, how long you can, um, do, sort of, do you have a business continuity plan and how long you can, uh, is, is your, is your uh, department can still function without the system? That's sort of the question. But in the end, they probably will still want to know whether this is going to meet their, their functional requirement. Uh, however, when you talk to um, your security manager, your security manager probably more concerned about uh, whether the data when it, when it's transferred between system had been in, encrypted, uh, had there been um, putting enough uh, security um, sort of um, uh, sort of se uh, security precautions um, sort of in your in your design. So you really need to understand what each stakeholder's um, sort of perspective. So when you talk to them. Um, making sure you're talking to their language. Um, mistake number seven um, is consu uh, confuse leadership with, uh, with sort of management order. So as I mentioned in the previous uh, episode, as a solution architect, you need to be a leader. Uh, what leader means is, I think Brian Tracy gave uh, two definitions of, uh, of leaders. One is, um, as a leader, you will have followers. Another definition is, uh, as a leader, you can elicit extraordinary results from ordinary people. So what that, what that really means, you can't just say that um, to the developer to say, hey, you have to use this. Um, you, you really need to give them the reasons. Like I mentioned that um, like if you need, do need to use a middleware, um, you do need to explain to them um, the reason, because we have those two risks, that, that the revenue impact and the, the private information uh, breach impact. Therefore, that by utilizing a middleware, that will reduce that. Obviously, middleware will do other things, but I mean, just explain to them the, the, the rationale behind utilizing a, a, certain, um, a certain technology. Um, number eight, the last one, um, is saying no. Um, often when you ask to say, hey, can, can we use this? You say, no. Um, can we use uh, this middleware? You say, no. Or, can we use this middleware? You say, no. Uh, don't say no. Instead of saying no, raise as a risk. So if you're thinking about utilizing a particular technology or a um, particular platform or particular pro product, um, it isn't the ideal um, situation. Just raise a risk. Uh, think about the risk or potential issues essentially that what this is going to bring to to the table and um, and then just talk, talk, uh, talk to your PM and different stakeholder to say if you go down this path and this is a risk you're potentially going to have are you able to sign it off right don't say no just raise as a risk okay here's um, the end of the episode um, episode um, number six um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.